Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to take a look at this setup here, which is all compact aside from the speakers. This was obtained as a full set. It is a compact Evo D300 desktop computer with a compact 7500 CRT monitor and the original keyboard and mouse. So again, this was obtained for free. This has done duties in uh, an office building as a uh, security computer, basically. And uh, it basically just sat on a, in a server room for all of its life. The monitor was barely ever used and it shows because it is a very crisp and bright CRT monitor for sure. It's definitely a lot better than the older CTX that I obtained for free a couple uh, months ago. And uh, yeah. So uh, it's a nice little setup right here. So let's get the monitor from the computer and uh, take a closer look at this Evo D300 desktop, shall we? Before we open up the case, let's take a look at its original specification. That's always something that Compaq did really well. Here is the sticker with the original specifications. D3M, which means a D300 mini tower. A P1.7 means a 1.7 gigahertz Pentium 4. A 20 means a 20 gigabyte hard drive. The 256 right here means 256 megabytes of RAM. And uh, NL means that it was made in the Netherlands, or at least sold here. And of course, the accompanying serial number. This has a Windows key. This is Windows XP Professional. These machines are also available with Windows 2000. To get it open, just two thumb screws in the back. And we can pull it out like so. It's definitely a very heavy duty machine, that's for sure. I had to replace the fan in the back there because it was no longer spinning properly. And when I lubed it up, it was vibrating like crazy. So I uh, had to replace that. It's 92 millimeters. The CPU fan is right here. In fact, let's see if I can pull it forward a bit more. There we go. Let's see if we can get a better look inside. It's a pretty anemic little cooler for a Pentium 4. It's, it seems like they just took the Pentium 3 cooler, uh, modified the uh, retention mechanism a little bit, and uh, stuck that on. I have a replacement processor on the way. This is a 1.7 Willamette processor. I'm going to be replacing the 2.6 gigahertz Northwood, already updated the BIOS on the system. The RAM slots are located under here and we can't get them in view, I don't think. But we currently have two 512 sticks in there. It had the original 256 megabytes, which is pretty neat. Under here is the hard drive. It's a 160 gigabyte Hitachi. Originally it came with a 20 gigabyte, like we said. Uh, this already came with the system. I did not upgrade that. I did upgrade a video card though. It came with an NVIDIA Venta 16, which is pretty anemic. And uh, I put in a GeForce 3 Ti 200. I had that laying around, 64 megabyte. And uh, it's definitely pretty quick. I also tried an FX 5200 that was actually slower than the GeForce 3 and had a GeForce 4 MX 460 which was about 10% slower than this card, but it's only a GeForce 2 core in the end, so uh, you lose some features like hardware transformer lighting and all that. Not to worry though, like I said, the mini tower is a system focused on expansion, and we have a connector here that sort of looks like an SCA80 SCSI connector, but it is actually to add extra PCI slots over there. So you can have one, two, three, four, five PCI slots, as well as this one 4x AGP slot here. The power supply is 250 watts. It is original to the system, and uh, it seems to work okay. I even tried a Radeon 9700 Pro on here that needed extra power, and even that plus the Pentium 4 didn't seem to uh, worry all that much. So uh, yeah, hardware-wise, this thing seems all in good order. I didn't expect any anything else, but you know. Also, uh, just. Taking a look around, the capacitors on the board everywhere it seems to be pretty much mint. There's barely any dust in here either, so overall, very nice condition system. So let's get the lid back on and uh, boot it up and see uh, how she runs. Okay, power on time. No smoke test because I know it works. There's one little downside, you'll notice that in a couple of seconds, exactly that, that the chassis fan cannot be detected. That's okay though. 
you can just ignore the setting and move on anyway. Now we wait up, wait for it to load up Windows XP Professional Service Pack 3. Typically on an older system like this, I would not really run uh, XP, SP3, but it seems to run okay on this one. With a gigabyte of RAM and a 1.7 gigahertz Pentium 4 Willamette. the compact image I just uh, put a compact background in there this is a bare install of Windows XP using a clean OEM Windows uh, XP CD-ROM yeah. let's get a better look as you can see here Windows XP professional service pack 3 Pentium 4 CPU 1.7 GHz, 1.69 GHz, and a gigabyte of RAM. Let's run some other software here. I should have a copy of CPU Z for older systems. That should do fine for this one as well. CPU Z here. And there we are, Intel Pentium 4, Willamette, socket 478. 256 kilobytes of cache, Intel 845 chipset, motherboard. Currently on the latest BIOS that I could find, which is 3.04. Gigabyte of RAM, running at 133 megahertz CL3. One of the sticks is capable of running CL2133, but I don't have that many 512 SD RAM modules, so. And we have the NVIDIA GeForce 3Ti 200. It's currently running on the built-in Microsoft driver. I've also tried one driver older and one driver newer, and the performance difference is non-existent, so there's no reason to bother that much with that. All right. So let's take a look at some software and maybe some games. Let's see here. We have the Microsoft Office Suite version 2003. This one still needs to be updated. We're still running the original release. I need to find a Service Pack 3 copy somewhere. I used to have one, but for some reason I lost the file, so who knows what happened to that. It is pretty quick in opening software like that. Here we have Excel. And here we have Microsoft Publisher 2003. So you can make some pretty nice little websites here, designs. So yeah. Let's play some of my childhood games here that I really used to play a lot when uh, our main computer was still a Pentium 4 era system. In fact, from 2001 all the way to 2008, uh, at home we were stuck with Celeron 1.7, was also Willamette, but that was the Celeron version, so half the cache, 256 megabytes of RAM, and that ran XP Service Pack 2. It was pretty bad. But at least it ran RuneScape. That was all I needed to play at the time, so. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if I remember my password for this account. Oh, we don't have enough skill. That makes sense. Otherwise, you would have noticed a way better video quality over the years, wouldn't you? Right, enough self-deprecating humor. 
here we have the one and only RuneScape. Let's take a look at how the system is doing. CPU is pegged at 100%, makes sense. Well, we do have a 505 total level, but that's also accounting for the member skills. This is honestly not that far off uh, from when I played this game. Oh, but I want that. Put it back. Alright. Let's get our armor here. We appear to have some trimmed adamant armor on this account. Put our cape on. Put the chicken costume back. Oh, yeah. I think I started this account basically on boredom. Couldn't be bothered to run my main account because it has higher skill levels, so everything takes a hell of a lot longer. Oh well, at least we have a rune scimitar. That's always nice. What are these? Sheep. All right. Let's kill some spiders. That was a tree. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Pretty effective. Even when we're running, it's uh, pretty smooth overall. Definitely playable on this. This is obviously the classic layout. If you move to the upscaled image, as you can see, definitely starts to be quite choppy. And then again, we're chopping with a scimitar, so it doesn't really matter that much. Let's kill this guard while we're at it. He doesn't seem particularly keen on dying today. There we go. That's more like it. Yep, I enjoy playing. Let's log out. Uh, okay, obviously, the 10 seconds after combat still applies. So, no, that works. That's always neat. And of course, we always have to play one of my other all-time favorite games, the original Unreal Tournament. From 1999, this is the Game of the Year edition. I think I have this set up for 800 by 600 resolution. Yep. short one. Otherwise we'll be sitting here for hours. Oh yeah, poison crossbow. Let's have some fun with that. Crossbow is terrible. 
And that's what she wants. There we go. When in doubt, use a pistol. for going online, right? <laughs> Let's not do that. There we go, kill that process. I also did a couple of 3D Mark 2001 tests. So this was with the FX 5200. We scored 3,606. This was GeForce 3 Ti 200, just after installing Windows. 5,212, so that's definitely a lot better. This was the MX 460, 4677. And this was the Radio 9700 Pro, 7,007 3D marks. So, yeah, it's about twice as fast as the FX 5200 uh, combination. Let's put it that way. I'm definitely very keen on uh, trying to get that P4 2.6 in here, and if it works fine, then uh, we'll try some different video cards. Uh, the Radio 9700 Pro would be a very nice bet, but I also have uh, an X1600 somewhere that should be a little bit more power efficient and uh, be basically just as fast. So, you know, we'll go from there. I guess this is a good uh, point to end the video. Hope you all enjoyed it. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.